Hi all, right, welcome back to Enemax in Kharkov, Soviet Solo, take two, part 64. Hopefully with some gameplay this time. Um, yeah, like I said last night, I uh, hadn't really had much time to get back to the table. I got a bit frustrated with the last bit. Not that that was putting me off, because I found that as a couple of days went by, I was like itching to get back, and then unfortunately work didn't really allow me to, to sit down, it, it, it wasn't going to be worthwhile anyway, anyway so I'm off over this weekend though um, so hopefully going to get a little bit in so um, yeah, nothing really to talk about, I think I've done most of my talking last night <laughs> if any is um had watched any of it, I did put a note in the header just as a heads up to that there was no uh, no real gameplay, just some fixes and some rants and some comments maybe. Okay, so it'd been a while since I'd done anything, so I was wondering what to do. So I've laid the cards out there. And I recall now what I'd done, my last two impulses, the first impulse of the turn uh, was to sneak back in uh, here and uh, secure that town again, which we'd left kind of vulnerable to this unit. Uh, so that was my first impulse, and then I believe my second impulse was, I used the third tank army card, but it was, again, to play the forward support marker. Um, I think it makes sense to put it down again, whether that's the right card to use to put it down, I, I don't know, but uh, that's the one I chose to go with. I think because I'm probably not interested in doing anything with the third tank. Right. One priority is to make sure this guy's in supply at the end of the turn. Um, I do have an air supply event in my hand. Uh, this card here. Which could be used if I thought he was under threat of attack. Um, I don't feel like that just now. Um, and obviously the best way, as we now know, the best way to maybe deal with this is to try and remove these two units. Or get them retreating away from this map edge and then we can go one two three four well even five six seven you see that one two three four five six seven i can come right down the hex edge there so as long as i can clear that unit into this next column um i have not drawn a 40th army card yet but obviously we're we're going to and uh, so i think we need to just chuck everything i mean it yeah, I think we need to chuck everything at that, probably. I mean, well, yeah, and see what happens from that. And uh, and third tank, I just want to, like, just sort of have them sitting just now. We just want to see what the Germans are going to do, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do have this unit that could be put to slightly better use. Well, slightly better use. To better use, definitely. You know, even if it's just moving into Kharkov or... Coming in here, I don't know if there's space. I think, I think there, are, there there will be a space in there. So I think there are two single step units. I'll not go start looking, but anyway, I've not got cards to do anything with that just now. So I've got two 69th Army cards, six Army, First Guards Army. Um, uh, the 69th Army cards. Yeah, I wanted to keep that for the possibility of the air supply. Um, and. Yeah, this was a replacement point one. Not only that, it does have another forward support. If for some reason the Germans took my forward support away again, uh, I might want to consider that. Um, now the sixth army card has got a replacement point. The first guards army card's got a replacement point. So I think the sixth army one's a good one, isn't it? Does that not allow us to? Think, did I not talk about that already? The fact that I don't think we've got any in reduced infantry, so what's this guy here? See, uh, yeah, he's reduced armor. Yeah, I talked about this before, I remember now. And this is reduced uh, mechanized, but we don't have a reduced infantry unit, a, a one step infantry unit. So that would allow us to repair one of these guys. So that's kind of strong, I feel, I feel. So probably going to use that. Not sure about the first cards. So what am I going to do first? Well, I've left one card out, obviously, and it's Mobile Group Popov. It does have forward support in it as well, but we've got our forward support marker where we need it. And, um, yeah, I think this is probably the time we should try and do something. Um, I was looking before I hit record, and 
the obvious move is to use this uh, these units, that's 8 strength, 12, um, 15 uh, against this guy. Um, <clears throat> now I can't move this guy at all, he's surrounded. And then I thought, could I get this guy involved and maybe have something on this, with this, this and this. But that's kind of weak. Not only that, I would be removing... I would be leaving, oh hang on, hang on. yeah that's a yeah, IP isn't it, so I'd be leaving one step, two strength in there, so I don't really think I can do that. Um, and then we've got, other unit we've got down here, I mean of course we do have these two units in here, not good, not good, um, but yeah that's where things went wrong for us um, a bit, so we've just got to make do with what we've got really. Um, I mean, to be honest, the way I'd played it out, um, we lost, well, that was a mistake I made obviously because I should have been attacking the first guards unit, but I actually had this guy eliminated too and he's only just came on the map, um, if you recall, but I had to redo that because that was a mistake. So we're actually slightly better off in a way, <laughs> we're not too fussed about the first guards army. Oh, and that was, that was the other point, yeah, we've got the first guards army um, replacement point. And I think that we'd take that into the reserves uh, if we used that for that. So I don't think we've got another one step unit on the map. Um, okay, so yeah, the, 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 all I can really do is have a go at this guy, I think. Because these, none of these units can move, they're all surrounded. So we need to kind of break out somewhere and this seems the obvious choice. Um, and yeah, I don't, I mean, moving this guy, I don't think it's going to help. If, if anything, moving this guy maybe back into the VPX. And then what was the other one I thought? Um, possibly moving this guy back into the city. Um, either the city or here, but I think probably the city. Um, so I could do that. So I could move this unit. I could move this unit, just defensive moves. Um, it's unlikely I'm doing anything with this guy. And I can't move these. So these two are my sort of chance at an attack. And I think I should do it now before 40th core. Activate again and cause more trouble. Um, yeah, so I, th I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's just move on and get that done then. And obviously the other part of this is um, the chance to maybe get this, um, us to be proximate to that. Um, if we can remove this unit, I mean, obviously it looks like we'd need, the only chance we're going to have is a pop-off unit doing it. Um, so we've got a couple of impulses, well, we've not got a pop-off cart. Well, we've got any one unit move, I suppose. But remember, we can't activate pop-off next impulse once we've activated them. So it'd need to be the next of the game, which gives the Germans two impulses in between to maybe put something in there and protect it. So the likelihood of that is, well, it, it's possible they don't. We we get lucky and they draw, I say we get lucky and they draw four, four Panzer Army ca cards, but um, I'm not sure that's lucky. Um, anyway, okay, so I'm going to activate all units in Mobile Group Pop-Off. Um, so, yeah, this, well, we've just talked about there's not an awful lot of movement. Are you going to move this guy back into here, Grant? That's the thing. Uh, yeah, the fact that this guy's now not got an IP and he should never have had an IP um, all game, to be honest. Um, I did want to go and double check on that, but I, ha I had checked already because my initial thought was, oh, was that after turn five that I built that IP because before, I think it's before turn five, everything's in support, isn't it? But it was, I must have checked that and said, right, that was after turn five and I placed, and I placed an IP on it. I'm pretty sure I put the, put a timestamp in the header for it. I think it was part, part 45, it was a way back. So, um, yeah, the fact that he, we know he's not got that anymore, um, it may be wise to just because um, I mean what else what else are we going to do with that unit? Yeah, in fact, let's not let's not mess about. 
But let's just move this unit back in. Uh, sorry, I need to break zone of control. So one, two, and three into there. Um, yeah, just to make that a bit safer. Because it, it, it can't really go anywhere else clever, really. So, and then the other decision, I suppose, well, maybe other two decisions, but I, I don't see myself moving this guy out. Is this one? Now, we could put it in here, like I said, but do you not think it'd be wise to put it in the city ground? Because I'm going to be moving this away and leaving these two units sort of approximate to the city. Whereas where at the moment, I mean, at the moment, there's only this one unit approximate to this. Uh, that's maybe not true. One, two, three. Yeah, he, he can get around. The thing is, this guy vulnerable. He's sitting there two strength. And we've seen what happened to him in the, in the messed up attack. Or, actually, did you get to see that? I can't remember. There was, there was a bit of removed, wasn't there? Anyway, um, so, and I know this is quite vulnerable here. What is that? That's five strength against that four. He's got an IP, though. Um, and yeah, I could put him in there as well, but I think I think it's probably better here. I mean, this has two victory points. So I'm gonna back this guy up. So I'm gonna go one, two, three into the broken hex, one breaking zone of control, two into broken, and then one back into Kramatorsk, isn't it? Kramatorsk? Yeah. So back into the city there. Yeah, I think that makes some kind of sense. I think. Right, okay, and then now for some aggression. Um which it's what you want to do in this game, but you've got to you've got to be careful. Um I was watching uh, like I say I've been watching Michael's playthrough of the um German Soul. Which funny enough he says he, he he's subscribed to my channel, so I think he's watched some of my previous stuff, maybe Arden and whatever. And uh, he, he says he hasn't got around he's not started watching my Soviet Soul yet because he's playing the German Soul and I just don't want to get confused by the rules which um, probably makes some sense and I should probably um, be wary about doing things like that myself you know because there are some differences that could catch you out if you start watching somebody else playing the, the other Soul version of the game eh? um, yeah I was watching and he, he, he's at the beginning obviously you're playing the Germans and you're just kind of Defend, you're trying to consolidate the units you've got, you know, because you know you're going to lose, and you know you're going to lose victory points, and and um, there was one, there was one bit where they had a unit surrounded, a pop of units surrounded, and uh, he chose not to attack it, and I'm pretty sure I would have went for it because the guy, the guy was surrounded, but um, yeah, and then again, that's probably the wrong choice, and he probably made the right choice, um, so, but. Um, it feels right here, but yeah, I said that before, haven't I? So, okay, well, let's not mess about it. How many shits are we getting? One, two, three, four, five. So we're getting five shits. Is, is there anything we can play? Uh, well, we've got... Oh, yeah, that's nice. The, the, the problem is... is is these are these are um, the supplemental cards that allow you to replace points. And that's, right, so assault coordination isn't any good. I've got air power, partisans, or tank brigade. Mm, we like tank brigade. Um, but the, there's here's the three cards. Hang on. So there's there's the three cards. That's that's what makes this game hard to decide what to do. You know what I mean? You know, a tank brigade, what's going to reduce a hit if I take one, isn't it? And it, does it add two strength? So, seven, 13. What have I got? 15 just now. 15, I would add an R2. Giving us eight to one instead of seven to one. Um, I like I say, it reduces a point. Partisans, actually, partisans isn't any good, is it? It needs to be attacking into a... Maybe we should uh, look at the actual combat tactics, Grant. Um, so, partisans maybe applied only if the defenders are in a woods town or city hex. So, I can't play that, which is good because um, 
I really want to use that for the replacement point. Um, now the and then the tank brigade is add two to Soviet combat strength of attacking and then reduce total hits by one in the combat. Which is really good, isn't it? I mean Yeah, it's maybe not brilliant in this position to be honest, because we've got seventy one odds. Though the other thing that is doing, however, is giving us an extra chip pool, which I wouldn't mind having six instead of five. And then, yeah, the reduction of the hat is, is good, obviously, but um, I would take my chances without that. So, of course, the other thing is, this is a replacement point again, and, you know, this card goes to the discard pile, we don't get it back next turn, so you're, you're waiting until, it's not until turn nine where I might get that card back to, to try and replace more points. So, And that would actually bring a unit back from the, the dead, if you like, back in the reserves. So it's pretty strong too, and yeah, just notice they're all replacement point cards, aren't they? So is this. Um, and the one we couldn't play, Assault Coordination, wasn't. That's typical, isn't it? And yeah, again, just stretching up, if you just look up at Kharkov, that's that's the unit we've got on Kharkov, is a one strength unit. I mean, okay, he, he's protected a bit by stuff round about him, but again, this would replace that point. So. But that's where this, it makes it hard in this game to make these decisions. Eh? I mean, these are pretty tough decisions to make. So, I'd like the extra chip pool. I mean, do I... Is it imperative that I like eliminate the unit? It's not really. Um, shoving them back a bit would be what I would really want to achieve. Because then I could get into the town at a later turn a later impulse um, obviously taking the guy out is, would be ideal but so 7 to 1 odds we've both got armour and uh, what is it 5 chip pools I'll be getting if I don't play any cards and obviously this combat tactic gives air power which yeah it's one of the random things that could or couldn't happen uh, German's still going to get a card draw as well, remember? They're still going to get a combat tactic, so... I've, I've said a while ago now, and feel like I should be sticking by the fact that when you get the cards, you really want to try and use them for replacement points, but I don't know. There's, go there's going to come a time where, you know, this tank brigade is a really good combat tactic, and... It, it could be if it was if it looked more useful in this combat. I think you should override the fact that you're getting a replacement point and just use it for for the combat tactic. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to bottle out and not play them <laughs> again. Playing more card. Nah, see, here we go again. Here's here's the 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 next thought is playing more cards is good for us we don't want the Germans to get so many impulses because they'll keep going to coming at us and coming at us uh, as these turns go on, you know. Um, what do we get next turn? We get a couple of first guards unit, they get a Rouse unit. And then the next turn, turn 9, it's just German units. It's not until turn 10 that we can get some some decent reserves. 10 and 11 and, and 12 in actual fact are all good for us. Um, you know, ten, ten's amazing. If we can get to ten, I still have the game go. And then, um, but then my thoughts were possibly try to close the game out on turn nine. But not so sure about that. But certainly, take dealing with us and getting this victory point back. Well, that's what we need, is it not? Is it not twenty three points on turn nine? Or was it twenty four? Yeah, I need greater than twenty three. Uh, where was where was the other point that we lost? Ah, yeah, it's down here, isn't it? Well, even more reason to try and clear this out, you know. So, yeah, I think something's telling me that you're you're telling me to play this card. Um, I mean, getting that first guards army unit back, and it a one strength unit and then if we need to rebuild it again a, ten, a two strength I mean is it is it that important 
I think I should be playing this. Get an extra chip pool. The odds don't matter. Reduce a hit to ourselves, which we could easily get. And it's an extra card. It's an extra card out our hand to move the turn on that, that little bit quicker. Uh, <laughs> Me and my duck grant. Yeah, I think so. I was just looking at the reserves that we do get next turn, and it is two first guards army units. One's a four strength, one's a three. Uh, I'm just infantry light, but so, you know, using that card to move that unit from here to here. Or, or using that card now to speed the turn up. Because bear in mind, by doing that, moving that unit from the eliminated units to the reserve units, both that's an impulse for us. Or using this to speed the turn up a little bit as well, and protect our units a bit, and give us that extra chip pool to try and maybe take this guy out. Yes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I've made my decision. <laughs> Yeah, you're saying, yeah, yeah, but you can change that, Grant. We've seen you do it before. <laughs> um, okay, so Tank Brigade. Right, yes, and these guys are going on, right? No messing about. Oh, this guy will build an IP as well, That's, which is good. Um, right, so attack on here. We have 4, 7, 13, 15, plus 2 for the Tank Brigade is 17. So, 17 to 2 is 8 to 1 odds. Uh, let's check in time we're getting. Add 2, so we'll come back to if attacking. This adds armor as well, but we've, we've had armor, so. And then reduce total hits incurred by the Soviets in the combat by 1. So, keep that one in mind, Grant. Hopefully, don't forget that. And, um, so, chip pools it is. 1, 2... Um, three and then he's a step two step unit so an R2 that's five plus one for the first uh, for the attack brigade six not quite the, the large attack I guess but well I mean yeah I could go nuts and add another card but and maybe I should be you know maybe maybe I should be chucking air power in as well but because I'm not making many attacks just now, and this is the opportunity to play the cards, so it could well be that that's what I should be thinking. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to do that. It was hard enough for me to do that, to be honest. So, okay, let's let's go with that. So the Germans are getting a card draw as well for combat tactic now, so fingers crossed. Here we go. Uh, it is Korau's intelligence, so... Right, yeah, from turn four onwards, intelligence on defense. Well, I don't know what that does. I think it cancels intelligence that we've got. As that rings a bell, but must do something else, you'd think. Uh, intelligence, German defense. The Soviet command value is considered to be one. And any Soviet combat attacks you apply this combat are cancelled. Oh, yeah, have having a laugh. Uh -huh. Return cards played as tactics to your hand. If the printed Soviet CV is one or two, reduce defender hits by one. Wow, that's brutal. Eh? Some of the, they're, they're really good. The what they've added to the combat tactics, they're really good. So this card's considered a one, and it wasn't a one or two, so we can ignore the reduced defender hits by one, um, and this is cancelled however it does go back to my hand so there is that um now what that does is then reduce this to seven and one and reduce our chip pools to five five chip pools again and we are not going to get the benefit of reducing a hit if we take one um okay i'll just leave that intelligence there just in case because if I do draw a chat that checks that, I might I might forget. So, um, yeah, let's leave that one in there. Right. Okay. Well, there's not a lot we can do about that. That's that's what they played. So, 
Right, let's get to it then. Um, so minimum, it's only a minimum of one, and then a maximum of five, and we've got 71 odds. Both have armor, it is a clear hex. He doesn't have a defender adjacent, that's all good. So, yeah, just depends what it comes down to. We want odds charts again, but they've been staying away from us recently, haven't they? Unless, unless it's the Germans that are attacking, I seem to recall they were getting them, but. And there is, there's only a couple set aside chats, so we've obviously not had much combat this turn. Right, okay, um, let's get the minimum one then. We got combat engineers, it's dispersal and supplied on the other side, so nothing doing. So I'm going to take the other four, so here we go, I'll get the next four. Oh, look what the first chip was. Eight to one. And which we had with the tank brigade. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Uh, however, we, we are still good. We are six to one on the other side. Yeah, sorry. Right, I think they've calmed down. Um, right, yeah, so we, we we do still have a D1. We're six to one on the other side. So that that's good at least. Um, it's just that was an A minus one and a D2 for the eight to one. Right, um, what have we got? Three to go. Okay, I'll get the other three. Come on, look. <laughs> I don't know what's in the back of this one, actually. I've not looked. Hopefully it's the same result. Oh, it's not. There's less than three to one on the back, so it's not going to count. Oh, two eight to one chats. How about that? When we were sitting at eight to one. Right, I'll get the last two. Hopefully, hopefully this still goes to plan. Okay, a 3 to 1 for the next one, so, uh, we need D3 to eliminate, so we're sitting at D2, so one more chip to come, just one more hit, please. <laughs> How about that, Devanash? A 7 to 1, wow, well, we got odds chips there, did we not? Two 8 to 1s that didn't count, because we lost that through the intelligence, and a 7 to 1 at the end there as well, so, um... Yeah, I'll I mean, yeah, I'll take that. It just unfortunately means all the chips are good. Well, you know what? That might not be unfortunate because when's our next attack going to be? It might not be for a while. So having all the chips set aside is probably good for us too because the next attack will probably be a German one. Uh, so five chips drawn. We've got D4, A minus one. But uh, D3 would be enough to eliminate. He retreats one, he retreats two for two hits and then takes his, he's only got one step, takes a step loss. Now the card didn't prevent him from taking the hits, no, no, and none of that intelligence part came in, and, well apart from the bit that they've done already, um, yeah. So um, yeah, well I'll not mess about, no hits to us, um, so he's eliminated. I will put, I'll just leave that there now, just so the combat, where the combat occurred, and I'll clear things up here, and we can, well, we'll look at advance after combat. Right, so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to do anything, but there's a couple of temptations, I suppose. I don't think I should be tempted into them. One, initially, was to maybe use one of these mechanized units, maybe the one step one at the bottom, to go advance, and then advance into one of these two hexes. Just to be adjacent to this, but does do we really care about that garrison? Really? I mean, we're not gonna I mean what what's further afield? There's this victory point up here. I mean it's not an impossible consideration this one, I suppose, in the long run. I mean I think you're talking later again. Uh, to possibly consider getting up there, but we we need we we need to be concerned ourselves with the forty core units. Pop off need to be dealing with them, and I suppose the other temptation was to go again, advance twice, maybe in, in this hex here. Um, to be honest, it, it doesn't surround this guy. If it, if it you know if we were if we were able to get surround on him, it might have been a better consideration. But um, you know. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I don't think I should bother advancing at all. You know what I mean? Taking that garrison out. Reserve, just looking up the reserves. Core Rouse units in reserve. Ooh, that's not good actually, is it? 
that's not good at all. Oh, we just drew a core rouse unit. Ah, sorry, a core rouse card, didn't we, for a, a combat attack? That might have been quite lucky. So I don't think I want any core rouse units out. I want to deal with um, the units that they've got on the map with a 48th army. <sighs> that would have been, if that combat tactic, I'd, if I'd been able to play my combat tactic, that would have been two card draws as well. More chance of getting the 40th army card, so now I'm only going to get one card draw. So, yeah, fingers crossed, I suppose. Right, so I, didn't, I don't think I will. I don't see the great need to be pushing on that garrison. And like I've said about coming around, so I think I'm just going to leave them there. Obviously, I'd like to be able to just move into here, but can't do that. Even with the two hex advance, and you need to enter this hex first. So I don't want to be able to go one, two, and back into there. So not so clever. Um, yeah, I was glad that was that was our thing again. Looking at Michael's playthroughs, um, he had a move recently where the AI actually made. In advance after combat like that, it advanced back the way and then back into the hex. And I'm glad to see he made he made the move as well. Um uh, you know, because it looks odd, but it's just it's one of these things. It's again one of these things that are a bit you know just take a little bit away from the AI, AI to because they they benefit in other areas, you know. And uh, it would just be more and more rules to try and build into the AI to make it more. So I think that's why it's part with that that they leave these rules out, maybe leave additions like that out, and part with the fact that they add little bits in that the AI benefit from that, that we don't get. So uh, okay, so I think I'll just leave it at that. And um, yes, um, we will be able to. Um, build a, an IP on this guy now let me just double check because he has well no he's not he's not surrounded anymore but I don't think that's an issue um, at the end of a Soviet activation you may place an IP marker in one hex containing an active undispersed Soviet unit in supply well it's in supply whether it, it's not asking if it can trace supply that did not move attack or withdraw on the activation yeah so I'm going to choose this one because this one's already got an IP. He's the only other, this is the only other one that didn't make a move. So I will place an IP on him. Because why not? I can. Right, okay, that's impulse over. That has pop off been activated. So I'm going to mark it up there. And that's 32 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll copy this part across. Uh, but hoping to come back and just push on with another German impulse. Um, so I'll tidy things up and I'll be back shortly guys. Okay, cheers. Hi all. Right, let's get part 64 fast for uh, German impulse. I did forget to draw my card now. Like I said, I was hoping to be drawing two cards, but we got forced to put the first guards army card back in our hand. So made my decision for me, I suppose. Although I hadn't made my mind up, I was going to do it. Right. So, could be looking for our 40th army card here, so what do we get? Oh, yeah, there we go, good. Primary 40th army card, and yes, please believe me guys, I don't, didn't manipulate anything there. Um, so that's good, because I want to, um, I want to try and do something about that, even more so knowing now, I just noticed that, um, the, the, Reserve units or core rouse units. I think they're just two strength infantry, but are they one? Is that one step or two? Yeah, they're, t they're two steps. Are they all twos? Yeah, they're all two strength and two steps. However, um, it's three units, so I'd rather they, they didn't come out to play just yet. Uh, on saying that, we might. We might have to be, I don't know, they might interfere with us within the turn, throughout the turn. The chances of us not deploying them are probably unlikely in the turn, you know. Okay, right, well, let's get German Impulse going and we might even find that we're doing that right now. So, uh, yeah, okay, German Impulse. Ooh. 
Right, army group south. Command value of five. Hmm. Okay, that's this won't be good. Oh, deploy all German reserves, two plus, if at least four units are eligible. <laughs> There's three. I think I would have took that, though, because I think worse things could happen. Uh, yeah, this is the three hex radius one, and it activates units in cities. Mm -hmm. So, it's not turn one to three. Um, so we're going to activate all German units within three hexes of the German unit with the most German units in its three hex radius. Also activate all German units in city hexes. So this doesn't care about core, army, um, it just grabs everyone within three and I'm waiting for the most. Okay. Right, so obviously we've got two main areas. I get the feeling it might be the fourth Panzer army area though. Uh, just glancing up there. Uh, well. Right, so what would we get here? Well, you know what? Maybe not. Uh, just looking for something central. Well, you know what? I'll mark, I'll mark a, put a couple of dice on. Uh, well, I'll pick that one being the central one. That actually grabs nine. So from itself, three hexes, one, two, three. It picks up this guy. Picks up only this guy, so that's one, there's two in, it, in his hex, two, three, four, five, six, and this is three away, and there's three in there. So that's nine. Um, I think if we moved into there, we would not get this guy, but we would get, no, actually, we wouldn't get that guy. Yeah, to get that guy, well, we could. We could put it here and we would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine as well. Is that right? Yeah, we're losing that guy, but gaining that guy. So I suppose we do need to consider that, don't we? So that that is actually a nine as well, because if it, it does come down to a tiebreaker, then. Uh, very wee dice. Uh, if it was here, no, no. So yeah, it's between these two down here. They both pick up nine units. Um, so let's look up the four Panzer arm area. Uh, right, sorry, I got called away there. I was on pause. Okay, so this is a nine as well. It's two in the hex. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one nine there. And I think that's the best we're going to get. <laughs> I think that's enough, to be honest. Nine units. This one's close, but it's eight. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this one's eight. So that doesn't count. And then even down here, this one is three, four, five, six, seven, I think. So, so we've got nine in three locations. So we need to tie break that. Go to the page open, army group south card. Uh, if two or more units qualify, select the easternmost, then southernmost. Um, I forgot my compass directions. East is this way, isn't it? I think. Is there not a compass on the map somewhere? Yeah, north, north's that way, isn't it? So north, south, east, west. So east up, well, well, it's going to be this one there then, isn't it? Because not only is this, this is also the most southern as well, and the most eastern. Okay. Uh, yeah, two or more, so like the easternmost and southernmost unit. Okay, so it's going to be this guy. Okay, so nine units from that hex. So the camp group three, I'll chuck that on there the nine once again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then these three in here. This is a 57th and two third core units down the bottom. Okay, so, right, well, here we go. Let's activate them. 
So we're still on turn uh, turn seven. So five to seven action steps up behind Soviet lines. And uh, none of the units um, have a problem. Even this guy he can still trace supply. Uh, yeah, yeah, no issues there. So move to VP Hex. Uh, right, um. Yeah, we did pick up this guy, didn't we? One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's gonna get back in there. Well, I did say it was unlikely first to last. I mean, we didn't draw a pop. Mind you, I could have used an any one unit move, couldn't I? Mm. Yeah. Right, okay. So, move to VP Hex. Move to German VP Hex. Only if empty or garrisoned in Soviet unit Proxima. Well, this is a German VP Hex. And we have a Soviet unit Proxima to it. So... Um... Yeah, these guys aren't surrounded anymore either, are they? I'm just thinking by moving this guy, he was keeping surround on these units, but because this unit got eliminated, these units are no longer surrounded, are they? No, not even this one. He can move into this hex freely, can't he? Yeah. So it's just that might stop that guy from moving around there. Uh, so just just looking at the uh, restrictions, he's obviously not causing Soviet proximity if he's moving in there. That's that's good. Don't cause any German unit in hex and Soviet support to be put in dangerous surround unless that unit is active and not yet acted. Uh, oh, and hold on, Grant. We do have we do have two VP hexes, don't we? However, there's no Soviet unit proximate to this one. So no, he's still considering this. Ah, however, no, 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 no. There's not a gap there, Grant. Just thinking if we do move into there. One, two, three. Yeah, no, I can't. There's no. There'll be no Soviet unit proximate to that either. Um. Yeah. Right. I'll come back to that one. Right. If not in dangerous round, which he is not. Um, don't end move in danger of sound, which he would be in here, I believe. Uh, well, actually, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, he would. Of course he would. This guy's here, Grant. So, out and in. So, however, the, there's an unless to that, and one of the unless is unless a move ends in a VP hex, so it would be. So he doesn't mind ending in danger of sound. Don't end making a marsh, right? That's not applicable. Don't cause surrounded Soviet unit to be unsurrounded. And this is a th where I thought he might be breaking a restriction, but if that unit's still been there, he might well have been removing danger, uh, removing surround from this unit, I think, by moving into there, wouldn't he? However, they are not surrounded now. He is not causing surround on any Soviet unit. Yeah, so he's fine. He's fine with that one. So the only one possible could be don't cause any German unit in hex and sub Soviet support to be put in dangerous round unless that unit is active and not yet acted. Well, these are active. This unit here is not active, however. So I was wondering about that one. So let us just see if we move that guy to there. Um. This guy was not in dangerous round. Is he now? I think he is, isn't he? One, two, three. We can move into here. Yeah, and surround him. Interesting. So, that's going to stop him from moving because this unit is not active. He's, uh, one, two, three. He's just outside the Camp group. So he's not an active unit. And at the moment, like that there, this unit is not in dangerous surround. However, if I move that unit to there, 
that unit is now in dangerous round. Ooh, okay. Well, I'm good with that. And yeah, it doesn't I mean although the the move himself moving into dangerous round, he wouldn't mind because he's moving at a VP height. There's nothing to say that it just says don't cause any German unit in a hex in Soviet support, which it is. This hex is in Soviet support. Um, to be put in dangerous round unless that unit is active and not yet acted. This unit is not active. And that move would put that guy in dangerous round. Yeah, I believe that's going to stop that from making that move. So there we go. Um, so is there anybody else? Right, move to VP Hex. I mean, there is, well, th this is a German VP Hex that we have units problems on that, but he was the only unit I think that can move, the only active unit that can move to it. Uh, I mean, these are all active in here, but there's no way they're getting right the way around there. Uh, I mean, there there is another VPX up here, but there's no Soviet units proximate to that. So, yeah, no, it, it was just that one. So, it's, we're not going to do it. Okay, interesting, maybe... But it's it, it's bound by the restriction just to to protect this guy. You would think you're, I suppose you would think yourself what's more important. You know, getting this VP time or protecting this guy. I don't I don't know, but that's the rules. That's what I'm reading. So we we need to just stick to that. Okay. Uh, next step is step three. Draw two action cards. Right. Let's see what we get here. I mean, this might get all nasty on us anyway. I think we've had quite a few attack cards came up. I think both major offensives are in the discard pile actually. Um which seems like a lot of cards they've been through, Grant. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well how about the six cards in there? And two major offensive cards. Six cards in the discard. Um but admittedly, we've had three activations, which is six cards. So, yeah, it's not that I've made a mistake somewhere, I don't believe. Okay, let's see what they are. So, the, well, there's an attack, we've got bold attack and advance. Bold attack is to be looked at first, and then advance. So... Okay, bold attack. Ooh, right. You could see this one being possible then. Set chase of strength. Uh, well, it's just active unit stack. Set chase of strength of active unit stack. Greater than or equal to one and a half times proximate Soviet unit stack. Action. All active units proximate to qualifying target move to target and attack. That's all active units. So once we, if we can achieve the situation, it means they're all involved. All the active units. Um, and then they're going to prefer weakest VP men moving dangerous around uh, and note there is engineers on the combat tactics so when we're checking situational here we ignore any IPs um, okay so in ascending order then what do we have where are we um this is a 6 and a 9. This is a 7. This is a 3. And these are both 10s. These are all active, remember. Even though they're, they're stacked, they're all part of the Kampf group. Right, we've got a 4 and a 5 in here. And then a 6. Oh, leave him up the top just now, though. So the 3's the 1R, isn't he? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah. So the three is the first one to consider. So he becomes a lead unit to do this check. So, yeah, but hold on, Grant. He's only checking by himself, isn't he? Looking for one and a half times. 
yeah, because he can't and McCoy and everybody else just yeah, we need to achieve the situation. So I mean he's only against us. So this is one to one odds. Um he would get a plus one for being having a defender adjacent. Um Oh, the cards are five though. Hang on, the cards are five. Remember the command value of the cards are five. So that doesn't give a minus one. And these are all in supported hexes. Okay, it's not major offensive. Okay. So in actual fact, there's a minus one for the card, but there would be a plus one for having a defender adjacent. So that is still just one and one. And then obviously the check in there is not worth looking at. Um, so that's not any good. Uh, right, hang on, Grant. No, he can. He can move. <laughs> Let's just make sure we're not missing something obvious. This is a time you should maybe pause a little bit and have a look yourself, you know. Okay, so just try to find the weakest target. This is a four, situationally. This is four. Now, you would normally get a plus one for the IP, but he doesn't get that because they've got engineers on the card. He doesn't have a defender adjacent as well. And he gets a minus one for the command value of the card. So this is actually a three. This is a three... We wouldn't include the IP, but he would get the plus one for being adjacent. So that'd be a plus one, minus one on a three. So he's a three as well. So these are both threes. Um, the three's not any good though, is it? Is it 43? <laughs> yeah, my favorite sum. Yeah, so four forty three is one point three, isn't it? So it's not quite one and a half to one. Um, five to three would make it happen, wouldn't it? But it's not five to three, Grant. It's forty three. So yeah, and and he, he can't actually get adjacent to this. He, but he could have went out and in on this uh, on the stack, and looking at forty three here. Uh, but again, it's not one and a half to one, so that's the best he can look at. And these these along here are too strong. That's that's eight, and that's six, I think. No, seven, even. And uh, they're going to get plus one, minus one as well. So yeah, it's no point looking along there. So I think we can move on past unit three. Um. But this one could be a bit more interesting. So this is the next check. I'll just put this guy down the bottom now. Now this is this is unit selector number four. So I'll zoom in a little bit now. So we've got selector number four, and remember the card does say unit stack. So it's your strength of active unit stack. So it doesn't just include that four, it includes the stack. So, and all these units are active. Remember, it's not a, it wasn't a core activation, it's a camp group activation. So these were within three of that. So they're all active even though they're from different cores uh, and even different armies. It doesn't matter, it just says German units. Uh, so three six eight. So we have we've got eight strength here, right? But more interesting. Now, right, I mean, just double check. I I think this is nine, isn't it? I think we've looked at this a couple of times. Right, it is nine. We wouldn't include the IP, but let's not go there. We've only got eight strength, so let's not look at eight against nine, Grant. However, eight against four is two to one. Um, so he's already adjacent to that. Could he move anywhere else? Uh, the unit and the stack. Oh, one, two, three, four, right. Hang on. Uh, okay, so interestingly, 
these two of these units could move one, two, breaking zone of control, three, four out here. And the reason I'm saying two obviously is because that's would then fill the stat fill the hex. Um, so we could have six strength proximate to this. So we could have six to four in this. Again a plus one minus one. So it would be six to four, which is one and a half to one. Um uh, Uh, however, this is still 2 to 1, isn't it? So the check here is 8 against 4 plus 1 minus 1 is 2 to 1. The, the other thing, I could get one unit in here challenging that, but that would only be 3 strength. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into there. But because that hex has only got room for one unit, I would only be counting 3 against uh, 3, isn't it? It's a 4, but that doesn't, it just gets a minus 1, doesn't it? Yeah, but three against three is just one to one. So one to one there, one and a half to one there, two to one there. So this is the one we're going to go for. Right, uh, sorry, I've been on pause for a couple of hours there, actually. And I got dragged away. So, um, right, we were looking at this being the lead unit check. We've already checked that. I couldn't find anything. This being in a stack... It was eight strength. Sorry, I'm going back over things here, but just need to remind myself. Yeah, and we were checking, and I checked here. This is eight to four, or plus one, minus one. Yeah, so two to one there. And what did we, uh, did I get one and a half to one here, was it? Yeah, because I could get two units round. Six, six against four, one and a half to one there. And uh, one to one here wasn't it three against three wasn't it i think yeah so <clears throat> so this is the one we're going to go for because we've got two to one odds okay okay so just try to remind myself there so we we've got one and a half to one we've actually got one and a half to one on this unit and this unit at least one and a half to one but we're looking for weakest uh when it comes down to the um, all active units proximate to qualifying target, move to target and attack. Prefer target A, weakest, and then... Oh, one second. Um, right, so when... Well, actually, no, that's... Uh, that's not true then, is it? If we've got one and a half to one on that, we've got two to one on that, that's not what we're checking here, is it? Um, we're checking for the weakest... And they're both the same, aren't they? So it's not... I don't think we check that, do we? Give me a sec. Yeah, so preference A is weakest, which is which is uh, lowest total situational strength. Well, this guy is four. He gets a plus one for being adjacent to supply to a unit. And he gets a minus one for the army group south card being a command value of five. And it's exactly the same for this guy. <clears throat> so there's no other adjustments to that um, so they're both as weak as each other even though the odds are better here than than coming around here um, it's going to have to come down to just the general tiebreakers aren't they uh, which would be lowest numbered hex. Well, I think it's going to be this one, isn't it? 1805, yeah. So it's still going to be this one. Um, it goes for... I mean, you would think... It, well, I'm <clears throat> I'm actually saying you would think it would be. However, that, mi that might not be the case. We might actually end up with a, a better attack on this guy because of where these units are. Because remember, all, act all units are going to activate and go for this guy. Okay, so we've found our target. This is the weakest. We tie-break it to lowest position hex um, so and then the card says then all active units proximate to qualifying target and move to target and attack uh, and like I say we've got our preference sorted out may end moving dangerous around blah 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 right okay so um, well first of all let's see because these these guys are already adjacent however there is a 
there is a potential to get into this hex here. So I think we need to che check that under 10.54, don't we? Which is already adjacent. During a German attack action, a participating German unit already adjacent to the target will move to a different hex adjacent to that target. Doing so causes the Soviet unit to A, become surrounded, or B, become flanked. Um... Well, what what heights did I say we can get in here? We can get in it here. We can't. No, we can't get in it here, can we? No, could we not? So we can only get in it here. That is not surrounding them. And it's actually, it's not flanking them either. It is, however, an empty hex, which you would think it might consider that as well, wouldn't you? But... That's not what it's saying. Because they're already adjacent. Uh, hang on, let's, this turns the page, doesn't it? Does it give me anything else? No, stack on the supply. Yeah, so I mean, it'll move to a different hex adjacent to the target. If doing so causes the Soviet unit to A, become surrounded, or B, become flanked. Well, any of the units moving from there to there does not surround that unit and does not flank it as well, because we're only attacking from these two hexes. So that tends to make you think they're just going to stay there. I get the feeling there's not going to be much of an attack on this. However, there might come something might come from somewhere else as well. Um, okay, <clears throat> so... These still move in, a, like, their order. Well, these are actually four, five, and six. So these are not going to move at all. They are going to carry out an attack on this. Uh, now, have a, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm saying four, five, and six. We've, st we've still got unit three here. He's, he's the first unit to consider. Even though this was the lead unit, I'm assuming... Yeah, no, it wouldn't matter if he could have got around there or not, because he was only on his own. It's only because this is a stack, isn't it? So, although we know the situation is going to um, be satisfied here, uh, I believe we still want to try and get Unit 3, who's the first in ascending order, to try and get around. That would be right, wouldn't it? However, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm th I think so, because... We were only, this was only being carried out as a check to see if he could be the lead unit. He's now not the lead unit in this attack. This is going to be the lead unit. Okay, I actually don't think this guy is going to be able to get out of the way anyway, is he? Because um, you'd have to go one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. He can't, he can't get around with this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, he'd have to, and this hex is full as well, so he'd, he'd have to get right the way around to here. So he, he's not able to do that. So that was unit three. Unit four, five, and six. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking you would do it in that order, although this is the lead unit, and we know the situation is going to apply. I think we then still got to look at them in ascending order to move them into position. Hmm. Okay. Like I say with us, active units, unit stacks. <laughs> I've always struggled a bit with this. But um, anyway, however, he can't come around. So four, five, and six are sitting there. They're fine. Uh, however, saying that, this this is unit selector number six as well. Uh, so four and five, six, he's from 57 core. He's from third core, so he should actually be looking at things before the 57 core unit he's not going to get around either I mean if that guy can't get around then these two are not going to get around are they um, they're still breaking zone of control so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 yeah I mean yeah and they can't get through this way so actually with that unit and unit 9 he's beside is staying as well Um. Now, Unit 7 was away down here. He was picked up by the camp group as well. But you can see he's no way of getting around there. 
So the only other two options are these, and they're both infantry, aren't they? So movement of four, and they're breaking zone of control as well. So again, one, two, three, four, they can't get around. So it, it's actually only going to be the stack, isn't it? Right, how many units have we had? Nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. So it's actually only going to be them that are going to go for this. Um... Yeah, I mean, they're, they're only looking for one and a half to one. They've got two to one, situationally. And when it comes down to it, it'll be two to one. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I kind of would have thought one of them might have moved into that hex, but going by, it's not surrounding and it's not flanking. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay, so I'm kind of hesitant. I'm just feeling on edge again. Confidence is low. <coughs> um, okay, so this is going to go ahead. This is going to be an attack. So these three units are going to come in and attack here. Um, so let's go through that procedure. So German attack, determine target and, and attacking units and move attacking units adjacent to target as directed by German action card. Well, like I've said, nothing else can get... I mean, here's the... Nah, uh, to be honest, it's not... Even if one of the units did move into there, it's leaving a space in this hex. One, two, three, four... Nothing can get around into that hex anyway. Um... But these would be in selector number order, apart from unit three here, these would be the next to 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 try and move. So um yeah, there's, there's no there's nothing else we can do with that. So they're gonna attack and then we're gonna apply the combat tactics called for by the action card, which is uh engineers. So let's get some numbers here for well what does actually engineers do? Because he's not that's gonna increase the strength, I think, isn't it? Because he's not got an IP that unit. You know. Um combat engine that's Soviets, Grant. Let's look at the German. Combat engineers, German attack. Remove an IP marker from the defender present prior to resolving combat. Well there's not an IP. If no IP is present, instead add two to the attacker's combat strength. The defender may not play the combat engineer's combat tactic in this combat. Yeah, I think we're getting away with one there then, because that's not going to increase the odds, is it? So he's got 3, 6, 8 strength, and we're adding 2, so it's 10. 10 to 4. So the odds are still going to stay at 2 to 1. Um, yeah, I just want to keep that bit uncovered, because... Tells us when it, when breaking off. <coughs> Excuse me. And then at the moment, <coughs> wait a sec. Right, okay. Um, at the moment he's got just uh, one chip pool for each of them. So three, three chip pools, and then for the engineers he gets an extra one. So that's four. But he's still he's now going to draw a combat tactic as well. Um, is that right? Apply combat tactics and then draw one command, German command card and apply its combat tactics. So let's do that. Uh, 47 core air power. If drawn during combat and not applied, return to deck and shuffle. Well, it is going to apply. So he's going to get air power as well. And also another increase in uh, chip pools. Um... Okay, so now we have the opportunity to play one Soviet combat tactic. Remember, we can't play engineers. Um, yeah, let me just think about that. Right, we'll just look in there. I mean, I could play, I've got, well, my options are, I've got air power as well. They've played air power, so that's a bit hit or miss. Um, this was a new card that I drew, obviously the 40th Army, so it's got intelligence on it, but I really want to I really want to activate them, probably next impulse. Um so I don't really want to use that card. Bring us back to this again, which we could use. Um 
Tank Brigade, um, uh, because he's played combat engineers, they, they've got 10 strength, and uh, Tank Brigade would only increase our strength by one, because we're defending, it adds two if you're attacking, one if you're defending, so it would be five, but if eight against five, then I would consider it, but it's 10 against five, so it's still gonna be two to one. It does, however, reduce hits incurred by the Soviets by one. So there is that. Uh, and it would give me armor. That's true as well. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I was willing to play the card last turn. I don't... Yeah. I don't really feel the need for this. I, I don't know. I mean, if this unit gets pushed back... You know what I mean? We've still got this unit adjacent to get this guy's supply. Um, we probably really need to try and, I don't know, do something with this guy. I mean, it's got a strength there. What is it? Nine. You know, maybe we should be joining up here and try to take something on. Um, yeah, no, I don't think I'm going to play a card here. I don't know, again, that could be silly. It's a chance of using up another card. Um, and I did kind of feel that the, I mean, I'm going to use this to assign a replacement point, which is really just going to move that one strength infantry that's eliminated into the reserve units box. I mean, you know what though, that isn't terrible because I know I just I just pointed out recently that we were getting two infantry units next turn. Now they would be going into the reserve units box as well, right? And that way we would have three units to deploy instead of just instead of the two, you know? So it makes it that wee bit better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep the card. I think I'm gonna keep it. So I think we're just going to go with what we've got and um, yeah, kind of hope for the best. Okay, so let me zoom in there a little bit. So we're attacking in here, aren't we? Yeah. Right, so and then on the uh, the card there, so that's five chip pools, isn't it? One, two, three, three units, two combat tactics, five and two to one odds it's ten against four yeah okay and um so if greater than or equal to five steps uh yeah he's got six steps hasn't he yeah he's got six steps then so he's going to break off at combat a2 otherwise it'll be a1 right okay right i think we're good to go yeah draw combat chats right so as a minimum first of um Yeah, I, was, see, I was starting to think of the German solo there. There you go. There's there's a perfect example. I was getting like, you know, we just draw them all. <laughs> no, you don't, Grant. You draw two minimum and then draw one at a time after that up until the maximum or up until it breaks off A2 or up until it eliminates this unit. Right, okay, so I'll get the two minimum and we'll see where we're at. Wow, well, 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 look at that. Um, obviously, this is the one I drew first. I was going to show you at first. I thought I might as well just draw the two. And then, of course, looked at this on the front side, City Woods, and I thought, mm, we're in a clear hex. This could be, it might be good, it might be bad. But it's actually turned out perfect. Look at that. Because we've got a D minus one. We've got a Defender adjacent. And remember, that applies if... Um, applies if defender adjacent to undispersed supplied friendly unit not yet attacked in this activation. Uh, applies to Soviets only if defending an adjacent unit's in support. So we are in support. Um, he does have a defender adjacent. So this does apply. So A1, D-1. And this one, given us a hit, just kind of balances that out nicely. And they're going to stop. They're not going to draw anymore because they're, they're, they were breaking off at A2 and they've got A2. Um... So that was uh, delightful. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'll tidy things up. Now, this had been used as well, so they, they are going to break off there. I'm not going to draw any more charts because they're sitting at A2, and it tells us that that would break off. This doesn't shuffle in because it did actually get used. So that was nice as well. 48 Panzer Corps card. Didn't do anything for them. It's now in the discard pile. So, um, yeah, so two hits to them and nothing to us. Okay, two hits to the... The attackers. Um, so the first hit is remove a step, and it'll be the unit with the most steps. So they've all got two, and then it'll be the highest selector number. So I think it's the fifty-seven core guy in the bottom. Yeah, he's a he's a six. So he's the one that takes the first hit. Uh, moves from a two strength to a one strength, and then they will. I think what is there five steps left? So the second hat, if the attacker's steps are less than four, disperse. Um, so no, they've got five steps. So they're going to actually take another, they're going to actually take another hat, otherwise remove a step. So now it's between the two, four and five. Sorry. Sorry, I had my phone on while I there again. And I get my text message. Um, so yeah, unit five is the highest selector number, so he takes the hit as well. And um, yeah, good stuff. That went well. That went really well. Hope I done it right. <laughs> like I say, my confidence is kind of low just now. Um, although I was determined to come into things, I have been pausing, I have been looking over things again, just not rushing it, just trying to look at other things. You know, I did start looking over at this unit. Was this unit a possible attack? But they, they can't get they can't get around to that. And so I'm pretty sure that was. I mean, there was that wee bit of debate between the two, but they're both the weakest. They're both as weak as each other. So it had to just be bro broken down in the tiebreaker and lowest hex number. Like that's. There's nothing else to. Yeah, 